Hello everyone, this video is about acute leukemia. First, leukemia means neoplastic proliferation of white blood cell in bone marrow with or without involvement of peripheral blood or non-hematopoietic tissues. Now it could be myeloid leukemia or lymphoid leukemia depending on the type of lineage that's involved. We know inside the bone marrow we have pluripotent stem cells which will divide into lymphoid lineage or myeloid lineage. So depending on the involvement there will be myeloid leukemia or lymphoid leukemia. And in the leukemia there is proliferation of immature cells so we have to look for immature cells. If it's myeloblast then it's myeloid leukemia and if it's lymphoblast is present then it's lymphoid leukemia. And also the rate of proliferation of these immature cells is very high and if it happens in short period then it's called acute leukemia which is the today's topic. If myeloid cells proliferate we call it acute myeloid leukemia and if lymphoid cells proliferate then acute lymphoblastic leukemia. First let's talk about acute myeloid leukemia. Here there is rapid proliferation of myeloid cells in the bone marrow and these myeloid cells they are immature myeloid cells which we call as myeloblast in acute myeloid leukemia these myeloblasts they cover more than or equal to 20 percent of the bone marrow if it's less than 20 percent then we suspect myeloproliferative disorders here in acute myeloid leukemia there is loss of differentiation of these immature myeloblasts to mature cells that will lead to pancytopenia. And also, since these immature cells, they are growing in such a high rate inside the bone marrow, they will suppress the growth of other normal cells, which will also cause pancytopenia. Most of the time, these immature cells, they die within the bone marrow itself. So, hepatosplenomegaly is less common in AML. Also, since no myeloid cells are present inside the lymph node, lymphadenopathy is less common. And since many cells are dying, hyperuricemia can occur. Now I'm going to briefly talk about a few points on the diagnosis because this will help us better understand the disease itself. So the first one is morphological. In morphology, we look for immature cells on histology and they should cover more than 20% of marrow. Morphologically, we can see the immature cells, but we cannot differentiate if it's myeloblast or lymphoblast. For that, we have to do cytochemistry. Here, we'll stain those cells with myeloperoxidase or Sudan black. And these stains are taken up by only by the myeloblast and not by lymphoblast. That is how we can differentiate myeloblast from lymphoblast. And also, myeloblasts have or rods. This is the or rod, which is due to collection of myeloperoxidase. Next, on immunophenotyping or flow cytometry, we look for different CD markers. We know each of these cells have their own CD markers. We have to find them just to confirm the diagnosis. Cytogenetics and molecular genetics tell more about of the prognosis. Generally, blood count in acute leukemia is low because not much of these immature cells are coming out from the bone marrow. But if somehow high blood cell count in AML is seen, then it means bad prognosis. AML is seen more in males than females, which is the same in case of ALL. The average age is 65 years, that is, it is usually seen in elderly people but ALL is more common in children's. Now coming on to the risk factors for AML. Under environmental factors, we have radiation, especially ionizing radiations, smoking, benzene, and drugs such as alkylating agents, which includes cyclophosphamide, chlorambucil, etc., and topoisomerase 2 inhibitors such as etoposide, doxorubicin, etc. Under acquired hematological conditions, we have myeloproliferative disorders, paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria, and aplastic anemia. In inherited hematological conditions, we have Down syndrome, 
DNA repair defects such as Bloom syndrome, ataxia telangiectasia, inherited aplastic anemia, and diamond black fan syndrome. Now on to the clinical features of AML. Most of these clinical features, they arise due to suppression of growth of other cells in the bone marrow. So we see features of pancytopenia. If there is anemia, there will be fatigue, weakness, pallor, and palpitation. Thrombocytopenia will present as bleeding, especially gum bleeding, bruising, and epistaxis. Neutropenia, there can be infections, but these infections are usually mild, and also there can be postules. Hepatosplenomegaly and enlarged lymph nodes are less common. Now coming on to the diagnosis part. Morphologically, on complete blood count, there will be pancytopenia. And as I've already mentioned, if WBC count are raised in complete blood count, then it suggests bad prognosis. Blood smear shows myeloblasts with our rods. In bone marrow respiration, myeloblasts will cover more than or equal to 20% of the bone marrow. How to identify myeloblasts in blood smear? These cells are large and uniform. They have finely dispersed chromatin and moderately abundant granules. They have prominent nucleoli with our rods. There is a term called a leukemic leukemia which is seen in 5% of the cases. Here, leukemia is seen in the bone marrow but it does not present in the peripheral blood smear. Now onto the cytochemistry. Here I've drawn a table where I've included different stains and I've compared AML with AL. So myeloperoxidase is taken up only by the myeloblasts, so it's positive in AML and negative in ALL. Sudan black, positive in AML, negative in ALL. Non-specific sterase is positive in AML but only in M4, M5 and M7 classes. These are FAB classification of AML which we will study later on. It's negative in ALL. PAS is positive in ALL but it's negative in AML except for M6 and M7. Acid phosphatase is negative in AML and positive in ALL but only in T cell ALL. Now onto the immunophenotypings. We know inside the bone marrow we have stem cell which will differentiate into a myeloblast. This will differentiate into promyelocyte, then myelomonocyte, and then finally into a mature cell. So these are all the immature cells. And leukemia can occur due to proliferation of any of these cells. So we have to look for these markers. Markers for myeloblast includes CD11B, CD13, CD33, and CD117. Markers for promyelocytes are CD13 and CD35. For myelomonocyte are CD11B, CD13, CD14 and CD33. And markers for monocyte are CD11B, CD11C, CD13, 14 and CD33. And as I've already said, cytogenetics and molecular genetics determine the severity that is the prognosis of the disease. Now coming on to the classification of acute myeloid leukemia. Under French American British classification, which is based on morphology of the cell, AML is divided from M0 to M7. M0, 1 and 2 are related to myeloblasts, where M0 refers to minimally differentiated leukemia, M1 is myeloblastic leukemia without maturation and M2 is with maturation. M3 is related to promyelocyte, which is called hypergranular promyelocytic leukemia. M4 is myelomonocytic leukemia, M5 monocytic leukemia, M6 erythroleukemia, and M7 megakaryoblastic leukemia. Out of all these, M2 is the most common. Also, M2 is usually associated with chloromas, which is a solid tumor formed due to accumulation of these cancerous cells. M3 is usually associated with disseminated intravascular coagulation and all roads are mainly seen in these type of classes. 
M4 is usually associated with eosinophilia, M6 drug induced AML and M7 Down syndrome. This is the new WHO classification of acute leukemia. This classification is used more than the FAV classification nowadays. So this includes acute myeloid leukemia with recurrent genetic abnormalities. So here you can see AML are classified on the basis of the translocations. Acute myeloid leukemia with myeloid dysplasia related changes, therapy related myeloid neoplasms, myeloid sarcoma, myeloid proliferations related to Down syndrome and acute myeloid leukemia not otherwise specified. Finally, coming on to the treatment of AML. Before starting the treatment, first we will divide the patients into fit and unfit. Unfit patients are those with comorbidities and above 60 years of age or those who are elderly. Because in this type of patients, if we give aggressive chemotherapy, this will have numerous side effects and this can prove fatal. So supportive therapy is given along with low intensity chemotherapy which includes azacitidine or cytosine arabinoside. Since we use low intensity chemotherapy, complete remission is less common. However, partial remission can occur. For fit patients, we cannot take any risk. So we'll give them aggressive frontline chemotherapy in 7 plus 3 regime. So 7 days cytorabin and 3 days downorubicin. The aggressive chemotherapy drugs are very cytotoxic and they can cause drug-induced cytopenia. The unfit patients cannot tolerate this and at any stage they can get infection and sepsis and this can be fatal. So aggressive chemotherapy are not given to unfit patients. Now coming on to acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Many features are similar with that of the acute myeloid leukemia. Here I have included only those that are different. ALL is most common childhood leukemia, which accounts for around 90 to 95% of childhood leukemia. Peak age group is 2 to 7 years, while that in AML was 65 years. 80% are diagnosed before 15 years. And just like AML, males are affected more than females. In ALL, there is proliferation of lymphoblast. But these lymphoblasts, they can be either primitive B-type lymphoblasts or they can be T-type lymphoblasts. So depending on that, the ALL can be divided into B-cell ALL or T-cell ALL. The risk factors for ALL include Down syndrome, defective DNA repair syndrome such as Fanconi anemia, Bloom syndrome and ataxia telangiectasia and ionizing radiations. B-cell ALL are more common than T-cell ALL. In the bone marrow, pluripotent hematopoietic stem cells, they first differentiate to pro-B-cell, which will differentiate into pre-B-cell and then mature B-cells. So these are the immature B-cells from where the leukemia can occur. Out of these two, pre-B-cell is the more common one. And here I've also included the immunophenotyping of these cells. Leukemia, can arise from either pro B cell or pre B cell. Pre B cell is most common type, and also its prognosis is relatively good than the others, that is, pro B cell and T cells. Let's talk about the clinical features of B cell ALL. They will have features of pancytopenia, that is, anemia, thrombocytopenia, and neutropenia. There will be bone pain. Fever, lymphadenopathy, and hepatosplenomegaly is less common. CNS testis infiltration can be seen, which is unlikely in AML. Hyperleukocytosis, if present, it suggests bad prognosis. T cell ALA is more common in adolescents, and most of them will present with mediastinal adenopathy with mediastinal widening. So, here you can see the widening of the mediastinum. Diagnosis in morphology, pancytopenia on complete blood count, smear shows lymphoblasts and they will cover more than 
Lymphoblasts are small cells unlike that of myeloblasts which are large. They contain no odd rods, no nucleoli and there is absence of granules and finely dispersed chromatin. Here in cytochemistry, I have already explained this one. ALL, lymphoblasts have positive pass stain and T cell have positive acid phosphatase. Immunophenotyping, since pre B cell ALL is the most common, so we have to look for the CD markers of these B cells, which includes CD10, CD19, CD79A, and TDT. These markers are present normally, but if they get cancerous, Additionally, they can show CD20 and CD22. CD10 is absent in pro B cell ALL. Cytogenetics and molecular genetics are more for the prognosis. If the translocation is 1221, which is mostly seen in children, the prognosis is good. However, the translocation 922, 411, and 119, which are mostly seen in adults, have poor prognosis. Now coming on to the treatment part, which is completely different from AML. The treatment is divided into three phases. First, in the induction, we give steroids, L-asparazinase, vincristin and downorubicin with high-dose methotrexate if CNS is involved. And after giving these drugs, we look for remission. If there is no remission, then patient will have to go for transplant. If remission is achieved, then we can continue with this chemotherapy for consolidation phase. In the consolidation, we, re we do repeated cycles of fincristin, downorubicin, methotrexate, and cytorabin. And finally, in the maintenance phase, we give 6-marcaptopurin and methotrexate. Thank you.